Coming up in this episode of What Makes a Man. Indo dindo tangezens. Ika malendo tangamga lapo. That wasn't crazy all these years. My biology cow father will then rape me. Look cool, look as a fool. Okay, boy, behave like what? Men step each other. Galinga nindi. Mufaz maye tefu se na unga tefu se. Ange tis. Inda maye fifty fifty. Ange yazi. I don't know if I agree with that. That's how we do it on self, boy. What they call it yourself. Why don't you put out the lights, boy? Why don't you turn the lights out? And that's why they call it yourself, boy. That's why they call it yourself. Why don't you put out the lights, boy? Why don't you turn the lights out? Why don't you turn the lights out? No one will know that. Hey, we always need to be away, nah. You know, most of us are aware of the scourge of violence, especially towards the most vulnerable in our society, you know, particularly women and children. And our government says that they, they're making this a priority. You know what I mean? I read somewhere that one in four women uh, is affected by GBV, which makes me wonder if, you know, we as society, particularly men, uh, failing our women and our children, you know? And I say this particularly because uh, most perpetrators are men. Where do we begin? In Gugu, Gukalat. I know what you are all going through. It doesn't move us in any way. We're not seeing results. He's just talking and talking and we're not seeing results. So I'm on my way to meet a big zoo in Epecville, a small agricultural town at the foothills of the Drakensburg Mountain, a community immersed in strong traditional and cultural beliefs. So I'd like to hear from Big Zulu about his views on how tradition informs masculinity and gender roles, and also ask him about the allegations that he was violent towards his girlfriend. You know, this is very important for me, this conversation, because these types of questions are part of the process that lead um, to healing and breaking the cycle it's for all of us as a society. So we found a big zoo at his own childhood school who is here to donate laptops. So my journey is to go around and meet different people and different mm. artists and different representations of mm. men. Yeah. Just to so unpack and understand what you can say, he did not. Yeah. So I think my challenge in your in your in your words, he mm. did not. What's a man? In the taxi, in the tangentiebe, nanga mapo la la we ya piwa uwa nanga pambili. In the in the tangents, in the Indo te nagegela umden gakun. Indo tindo ta eya zumundo esfazan ubutu yin. Indo ta indo ta ebegum umden noa yopambi. I just want to know what he, where now where do you stand with the accusations that that. Nege ngange na deep ubuti gwenzagalani. God wa indexo meluias gogo gongengshi angi mtin to mundo esfazan nzanzazam. E kulenguam laikai. We are protect. Yonge i i relationship ineng ingazayo. Kya kachwana kubena maputa abakona enzagalayo alungi se food. We abo ngoba yonge indo njenga manji righti yonge indo ya lunga ne kini so yes la puma. We understand. But I'm expecting Mundo Guti, I call Ele Leon Doleo. You know, each Indo fan and a much gender roles. Umfas, so kitchen, Umfas, we are clean. Uba, we are servants, we are machine now, none, 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 none. Kulapo and Abanya, Oba, by Bakupa, Baba, News and Santa, who was a batsy, Bafago Mama. Tina's Kulesas with him. Into umbi uishele lubuli, but impa uitata uyenzungo skazu itateli mbato. Weyabon, tina ges kulesa zuguti masikti utatu magodi. 
uthatha umuntu okhuthele ozokwashela kuphekele amise ikhaya amise umusi uyabona ingane zikhule zikhule kamnande khaya ma windowda kumele uyithola indawo yakhe khaya indaba ye 5050 angiyazi futhi angiyingeni eh gimi futhi kowami ngiphila kuwo ayisebenzi gimi mangabe kune 5050 why bezovuma ukuthi ulobo lomuntu esifazana kungani naye angakilobo elikini akulingani we understand umsebenzi wendoda indoda kusamela iwenze kodwa umsebenzi womuntu esifazana usenga ngawenze wenze wena indoda ngenxa yokuthi ikuthi we 5050 uyabona i think at the time because as soon as I lost the lesson, it was a time where oh mama couldn't leave Ikaya. Women were not allowed to work. Lalel, even even if umfazu ya sebens, God win daughter mela inigeze inda waya yoguti guse ubaba wala Ikaya lo. God wa manghabe nizo tuta na yoguti fifty 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 nlo niti fifty ngesi ngani ni alinga. Nyalingane endlini umfazi maye ethe fuseke nawo ngathi fuseke njengale nto bebe ifaka nje yokuthi ikuthiwa umuntu esifazana esengakhona ukushada amadoda amabili amadoda amabili eh but you know why why is oba is oba okay for indoda le thatha yafazana i leyo ndo leyo sikhule thina ikhona isemthethweni yenzeka inane zathu zokuthi kungani enze nami mina am one of abantu abafuna isithembi nginaye nginaye ungosikazi egoli ne kodwa nginekhaya elila ne ungosikazi zwami yes uyakwazi konke uyakwenza konke kodwa impilo yala ekhaya yokukhulisa yokuvusa ikhaya leli lala angimboni enamandla lawo ngoba phela mangabe uthatha isithembu sokuvusa umusi mhlawumba ukwazi lo mangabe umuntu esifazane ethatha isithembu sokwenzana mara kuthi ukuthi lo nto osamshatele kokumthanda umshatele ukuthi azovusa umusi umuntu awuthi ukufundisa samindi ngongayazi indombi dingeke ukuthathanda indoda kumele ayihloniphe indoda uthando kumele liphume endodeni leko ngosikazi Something that didn't sit well with me is that uthe eh umfazi kumele akhloniphe akudinga ukuthanda kumele nje akhloniphe uthando usuka from the man I don't know I don't know if I agree with that. There's so much to unpack here. When thinking about Big Zulu's response to the allegations of being violent towards his ex-girlfriend, it's important to remember that this was Big Zulu's side of the story and that we haven't heard from her today. This was a very difficult conversation, you know. But what it reminded me of is, is that we as human beings, we're not linear, you know. But in order for us to get to a better place as a society, we need to definitely embrace the complexities of this problem, you know. Look at the inconsistencies of people's arguments, you know. Embrace the pain that we have suffered from these problems, but also the trauma we've experienced. Uh, I'll be honest, you know, as a, as a young man in his 20s, I, I don't agree with Big Zulu's um, take on gender roles, you know. Um, I would definitely want my son to, to be be proud about his tradition and his culture but also to love his partner and vice versa coming up after the break my biological cow father will then raped me Gender rights activist Andile Khaleshiwe has uh, formally laid a rape charge against her estranged father. I didn't do it for all these years because you're afraid of the system. We've heard and seen many cases, you know, opened and no justice. The fact that it's 20 years ago, that doesn't mean anything. There's, you told someone, you, whoever you told, those people will come and stand with you.
In this journey of unpacking gender-based violence and what it means to be a man, it's vital that we center the voices of victims to help us understand the real pain and the suffering that our people are going through. So we're on the road again to meet with Soweto-born Andile Khalisi. And this time we're headed for her launch of her memoir, Remembering. My biological father, who then raped me, I, I, I ran and I went to the bathroom and I spent the night in the bathroom, right? But throughout that night, the pain of, the physical pain, right? Uh, of penetration, of it being done by my biological father. And at that point, I don't know a boy. I have not had sex. You just raped me. If I'd had a strong enough relationship with my mom and I was able to go to her after the event had happened, we could have got my dad arrested, first of all, at that time. On stage, I noticed you're smiling when you're telling the story of what happened. Is that a coping mechanism or, or, or part of the healing? <sighs> For me, it's no longer painful because it's no longer a wound, it's a scar. So a scar has healed, you'll still see the mark, it's not bleeding. So I smile because I'm constantly, every time I'm asked questions, I'm constantly reminded, oh Gwanja, I went through that, but I'm here now. And so it's a, it's a filling, Feeling my pants, wearing my, you know, being full in my everything. Um, and, and being present, because that's all I can be, you know. Um, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve, so when I'm not okay, you'll know. When I'm about to break down, you'll know. When I'm not feeling okay, you'll know. But when I smile, it's me, it's almost, it's almost pulling a zap sign to the nonsense that I've been through. Yeah, it's me taking my power, it's me standing in my power. That's why I wrote about forgiveness in the book, because if you don't forgive, it's not just about that person that you're not forgiving. It's almost like you're taking a knife and stabbing yourself. You don't forgive, then you are the one that, that is messed up. Can you say you forgive your father? I forgave my dad. I, I forgave him the day I went to go open that court case. And then that evening, a ser sergeant or contact, whatever that man's uh, title was, called me to ridicule me on the phone, um, telling me that, yeah, my case is 20 years old. I don't remember things. And yeah, because I'm famous, now they must open a case. And then when my, my stepdad, who's now passed on, spoke to me and was like, let it go. It's gonna do more damage than good for you. You've done well for yourself. Since 2002, you're healing women, you're healing yourself. Let it go, let him go. But I felt like I let women down because this is my father. He raped me first. I don't know if I'm the first victim of his, but I felt like if I didn't report it back then, these other people would have been saved. But then again, all of us are on our journeys. So I also know what I can take on my shoulders and what I cannot. With perpetrators, they might make an excuse of, this is why I did what I did. But can it ever be justified? No, no. I mean, look here. You drink alcohol, you go stab someone. It's not the alcohol. You, your, your state was altered, sure. But even in that altered state, uh, altered state, you still can put two and two together. You went and hurt someone, not yourself. So your brain could still compute. So when I say the devil got a hold of him, that's a story I was telling myself. It doesn't make sense, no matter how you look at it. And then Moza Mugutu's kupule was controlled. Then you're like, okay, maybe we won't get no satane that day. But no, actually, go cooler and get to know who this person actually is. It's got lots of kids everywhere. It's 
was a famous musician. This is somebody who didn't have, uh, does not have self-discipline. Uh, this is somebody who's entitled, who takes what he wants. And for that day, for those minutes, he saw what he wanted and he took it from me. But he's the same person whose DNA runs through my veins. It's a uh, mind for a better, for lack of a better word. But the point is, he's a monster. Speaking to Sisandile, it made me think how common it is that we hear about sexual abuse taking place in our own families. And yet we don't know how to talk about it. The realities people face day to day mean that abused children and women remain silent. And so the cycle of violence is allowed to continue. Now Andile's case is one of many and fits within a wide spectrum of what gender-based violence can look like. I want to speak to someone who can make sense and make me understand where is this violence in our society coming from. So I'm here to look for Professor Malosi Langa, who's the uh, senior lecturer, but also an associate professor in the Department of Psychology, Upper Vitz. Um, and so Professor Langa wrote this book, Becoming Men, which is about black masculinities in South African townships. So I try to learn from them, from them, and pack and understand. In Monday, you have to find another professor. Lang, we still don't know how So that's why I'm pack. I'm to test South Africa. I call on John, and as a result, it's the pet just in John. What makes a man? You're not born a man. You have a sex organ. You become, and you become through socialization. How you're taught things that you're being told. From a very young age, you get told to say, like, you're a boy, behave like one. You're a girl, behave like one. For boys, that process is very traumatic. That process is very violent. But maybe let me give you a very simple example. You go to a crash. Let's say you meet the four-year-olds, the five-year-olds, group of boys. And you say to them, who is the weakest of all here? You know what will be the reaction? Not me and not me. And then, Already they've already gauged each other. Mm. And they may all tend to say, Wayanda. Mm. And then Ayanda may react with, No, I'm not the weakest by doing what? By then pushing other boys. Pushing other boys. No, it's not me. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, getting violent. You know, yeah. and by pushing, it's a demonstration to say, I'm not the weakest. Mm. And this is the burden that men sort of like me carry. They need to prove. And, and this proving has to happen in a public fora. Yeah. Yeah. you know, for it to be seen, okay? Mm. And that proving, it becomes costly and it becomes costly and costly and costly. Because along the way, men stab each other. You know, mm. the, the male homicide in this country is skyrocketing. But then how does it get to the point of Kukume's mm. Abafaz? How does it get to that turning point mm. if this is to prove who is the alpha male? The violence against like no women cannot be seen in isolation through male-to-male sort of like no violence. You know, because this discussion unfortunately cannot be divorced from our history of colonialism, history of our apartheid, and where we are at. Here you see how this young black men like you who grew up without like no fathers are rejecting or are distancing themselves from anything sort of like no negative. But that distancing you can see in the book, it comes at a cost. It's quite painful. And, and I'm of the view to say we're going to raise a new group of like the men that will begin to question things and question things. And obviously when you question things, I'm of the view to say change is bound to like you know, happen. We as a nation, we need to dig deep on how we define what a man is. Professor Langer talked about how it starts with how we are treated as children and hypermasculinity is encouraged. Like we now said in the last episode, we men feel the need to overcompensate. Maybe that's where our tendency to be violent is rooted. And our history of colonialism and apartheid is a huge part of this. We as a country have a lot to work through. And the journey is only just the beginning. In the next episode of MTV Sugar, What Makes a Man? The issue was not gender, it was violence. The original rules of street culture, there's no part that says disrespect to women. My primary abuses are women because I never let any white man like close enough to me. First generation of black men who were raped were raped in the mines. 
when white people were taking our grandfathers and our uncles and breaking the back. The lady that was doing counseling with was like, you have deeper issues, my guy.